Our Father, we thank you this morning. We glorify your name. What a new day. Lord, we thank you. What a new day, there's going to be a new faith. A new revelation. And Lord, we pray as you lead us during this day and for the rest of the week in this Congress, Lord, everything we still need to have, everything we still need to know, everything we still need to possess, grant to us in Jesus' name. Send your spirit once again to every one of us to guide us into all truth. The truth by which we'll be able to stand in these days of challenge. Oh Lord, we pray that this work of the Lord will prosper in our hands in Jesus' name. We pray, Lord, we will not fail. We will not fall by counting and trusting our faithfulness. Our confidence is in you, not in the circumstances around us. And we know that this work will prosper in our hands. A new day, a new dawn. And Lord, we pray the power, the resources, everything we need to disciple a whole nation. Each nation that we have come from, all the nations of this continent of Africa, and even beyond, Lord, grant unto us in Jesus' name. You have your man, you have your woman, you have your instruments, you have your materials, you have everything you need in every country, Lord, raise them up link them with us reveal them to us reveal us to them that as we join hearts and hands together we'll be able to finish the task you're giving us to do we thank you because we know you have answered in jesus wonderfully mighty mighty name we pray thank you very much we're coming to second peter chapter one in second peter chapter one i'm reading from verse one simon peter a servant and an apostle of Jesus Christ to them who have obtained that have obtained like precious faith with us through the righteousness of God and our Savior Jesus Christ here the Apostle Peter is writing to the church he's writing to those who are saved he's writing to those who are sanctified he's writing to those who are submissive he's writing to those who have given their life and everything they have got unto the lord and he's writing to these people of like precious faith how did he know they had like precious faith because as he was saved by faith they were saved by faith as he was walking by faith they too they were walking by faith and as he was living by faith the just shall lay by faith they too they were walking and they were living by faith and as he was projecting into the future and seeing that everything god had given him to do by faith by faith in the faithfulness of the almighty god he knew that these people they had like precious faith because of the demonstration of that in their lives and i believe that you have the same like precious faith being saved by faith justified by faith living by faith walking by faith and looking into the future not in fear but looking into the future by faith and the lord is writing to you today and the lord is speaking to you today that if you have that precious faith faith in the lord faith in the lord jesus christ who is building his church it says to those people who have obtained like precious faith and once again let me remind you the lord speaks to our faith it doesn't speak to our reasoning the lord speaks to our faith it doesn't speak to our tradition the lord speaks to our faith it doesn't speak to our adamic nature the lord speaks to our faith it does not speak to our human nature the lord speaks to our faith it does not speak to our secular education you know the problems people have and they have some tradition and some background and then they have some things that they have brought up all these various years and because of anything they hear they pass it through the seat they pass it through the uh, instrument or through the microscope or through the lenses of their tradition and then you'll never get revelation of god that way and sometimes there are people that they have secular education and secular training and whatever they hear they pass that through their secular education god will never speak your secular education it speaks to your faith and when god says arise and go do something he's speaking to your faith not your reasoning not your background not your tradition not your denomination 
it's very difficult for the Lord to speak to the denominations. Jesus Christ came, the, the final word of the Almighty God. It says, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. The personification of the word came in their midst, and then he spoke to them, all those religious people, Sanhedrin, all those people, the Pharisees and Sadducees, could, they couldn't understand, because they were receiving what Jesus said in their religion, and through the lenses of their denomination and the Lord will never be able to get through to you if you pass everything through your denominational religious background is speaking to your faith that's why Peter the apostle said now to these people who have obtained like precious faith and this he tells us and I believe that as you have that like precious faith the same kind of faith they had you're going to do it in Jesus name now we're talking about like precious faith not just faith not just faith that there is a kind of 21st century faith thank god people get saved but it's not like the faith of those apostles it's not like the faith of those early believers it's not like like precious faith it's not so precious the faith you know, they can give it up any challenge comes they can give it up we're talking about the kind of faith that imprisonment could not take it away from them like precious faith priceless faith a kind of commodity in their lives and a kind of faith that they had that they knew that this was greater than anything you can think about in the world and he says i'm writing to the people i'm talking to the people i'm giving instruction to the people that have this like precious faith and you need to come to that level you know it's a tragedy it's something difficult for preachers and pastors when they're talking to people but uh, they don't have any faith to receive what, what you are saying it's so high and it's so great and it's so reachable and it's untouchable and it, it, it's mysterious to them it is mysterious because they do not have the like precious faith and sometimes has to come together like these ministers from all over this nation and ministers from all over this continent of africa and even some parts beyond as, as we listen to the word of god and then we're speaking to your faith we're not speaking to your ordinary faith we're speaking to those people that have the like precious faith of peter of john of james of those early apostles of stephen of philip of those people that received the word of god and they counted nothing impossible and they knew they knew that the thing to do is what the lord has said that when he says come on the water and walk on the water they knew that was the kind of faith they had and the lord is saying this morning if you're going to have the benefit and if you're going to possess the precious promises precious faith precious promises priceless faith priceless promises great faith the great promises and the glorious promises the lord has given us he says the only way you can possess them and the only way you can have them is to have this like precious faith we're looking at second peter again chapter one i'm looking at that verse one simon peter a servant and an apostle of jesus christ to them that have obtained tell me out loud like precious faith with us like precious faith with us can you match that it says we are apostles the lord called us and we gave our lives we gave everything we've got we gave it unto the lord because of the faith that we had that the lord is able to do anything and is able to do beyond anything you can even seek or imagine he said that is the kind of faith we had we let everything abandoned everything and we submitted everything unto the lord he said it is those that have that kind of faith the like precious faith like us with us and in the lord jesus christ the same christ in whom we believe those are the people we're speaking to and when you climb up the ladder and you come to that like precious faith today i believe that everything the lord says to you you receive with that faith i said you receive with that faith if you try to receive it and reason it out with your intelligence you'll never get it if you try to reason out with your mind you'll never get out of the boat if you try to kind of analyze it scrutinize it you will never be able to get to the level of having the precious promises of god but the precious faith like those apostles 
like the people of old, and then having the precious promises. Look at verse 2. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and the Lord and Jesus our Lord. It says grace and peace be multiplied. Uh, uh, do you know that it's very difficult to, you know, for faith to grow where there's no peace? Where there's no peace, it's like you plant a seed. And when you plant that seed, and then you have fire coming, flood coming, and then wind is blowing, and the rats are running and out, it's very difficult for that plant to grow. But it is when you, you plant a seed, and there's peace, peace in your heart, and peace around you, and peace in your family, and peace in the church, it's in, in the environment of peace and grace. When you are gracious to one another, I'm gracious to you, you are gracious to me, and there is this, uh, you know, interaction being, being gracious to one another, and the peace of God, it is in that atmosphere of grace and peace multiplying. The grace is there, the peace is there, and the grace and the peace, they're multiplying. It is in that environment that the faith precious faith we're talking about can grow and take root but if you give show me a church where they're not gracious to one another they're not kind to one another and they're not meek with one another and they do not know how to touch other people's lives and talk to other people relate to other people minister a member pastor and the people and the priest and the flock everybody gracious to one another and having peace between us there will not be the possibility of that precious faith growing will be focused on the wrong thing come on to verse in according as his divine power has given unto us all things pertaining unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and to virtue he said if we have any lack any limitation any loss at all it's because of our lack of precious faith because he says all things pertaining to life has been given unto us according as his in his power in his authority and in his might in his strength he has given unto us all things concerning life personal life your professional life your family life domestic life and your life in the community community life anywhere you are in any country he says he has given us promises that will match any problem you may have whenever you have any problem eh, what you need to do is to go back to the world and then look at the promise of god that will match that problem whenever you have any challenge go back to the world and see what the lord has promised that will match that challenge and then he tells us now that it is for life and godliness don't tell me there's so much temptation in the place where you are that you cannot live a victorious life when he has given us all these great promises that will match any temptation and he'll give us both life and godliness then he says he has called us to glory and to virtue he has called us to glory and virtue he has called us to what tell me out loud glory. glory and virtue not disgrace not vice not evil not defilement he has called us to glory and to virtue whereby he are giving unto us exceeding great and precious promises there we are he has given us exceedingly great exceedingly precious promises that by these promises ye might be partakers of the divine nature having escaped the corruption that is in the world through laws you will escape you have escaped already precious faith and precious promises three things to consider number one understanding the fullness of his precious promises understanding the fullness of his precious promises number two uprooting fortresses against his precious promises and sometimes that satan will raise up fortresses strongholds against the precious promises of the lord and you need to uproot them we're going to approach them anything militating against the fulfillment of the word of god and the will of god in your life uprooting the fortresses against the precious promises number three upholding faith for the precious promise upholding faith for the precious promises number one understanding the fullness 
of his precious promises come back to that second peter chapter one verse three we need to understand if you don't understand the promise he has given how will you know to claim how will you know to receive those precious promises the lord has given of course we must understand he's telling us in first p in second peter chapter one verse three and verse four according as his divine power you know the, the lord doesn't promise anything according to our human resources and the lord does not send us out according to you know the recession in our nation the lord does not send us because of the farming in our locality according as his divine power he has given unto us he says look unto me he says walk with me he says labor with me he says don't look around you and say well the world doesn't have this the earth doesn't have this the church doesn't have this i don't have this and i don't have that everyone he has chosen he calls them to look at his divine power he called gideon and gideon said but you are mine because i'm the least in my poor father's house and the lord said go in this thy might o valiant man and then he made an announcement he made a call and that two thousand people came out and the lord said there are too many i'm not going to walk with that multitude he said you tell them anyone who is afraid anyone who is, affra who is frightened it, because of these people that i gave us let him go back twenty two thousand came, went back remained ten thousand and the lord said there's still too many get them to the riverside and let them drink water the people that laugh like the dog those are the people i'm given the i'm giving the midianites to only 300 and gideon and the 300 he himself he wasn't too courageous and the lord said if you're afraid go and listen to them they're already telling the story of the dream they had and they're interpreting the dreams to themselves that there's somebody coming from the land of israel is going to defeat them and there's somebody coming from this place i said there's somebody coming from this place where is that man where is that woman you are the one and even though you don't feel very strong and very great the lord is going to walk with you according to his divine power in jesus name it says according to his divine power he has given unto us all things that pertain unto life and to godliness he has given he has given unto us if he has given unto us why don't we have why don't we manifest it because he said joshua get up i have given the land unto you chapter one of joshua and yet it took some real fighting it took some real holding it took some real defending defending all your territory the lord has given you before they add them and yet he said i have given unto you the same way the same way he has given unto us all these uh, precious promises everything pertaining to life and pertaining to godliness through the knowledge of him aha uh -huh. that means we need to study he has given us what if we don't know where he has given us what if we have not made any research as to what he has given us what if we have never investigated and examined what he has given us what if we don't know all the perimeter and all the territory of what he has given us he said he has given unto us all things pertaining to life and godliness that means then for me to live this life this new life all the resources are there all the grace is there and then the godliness the holiness even if i need to go to the height of enoch living a holy life a righteous life the resources are given even if you have to live like the people that had no stain at all any moment any day of their lives it says all those resources they are given and then it says whereby are given unto us exceedingly great Exceedingly precious promises that by this ye may be partakers of the human nature, of Adamic nature, of the nature of uh, you know weak people. What kind of nature? The divine nature. You tell me what the divine nature is ever fearful of anything. What the divine nature is ever kind of unbelieving about anything. What the divine nature is ever uh, you know coming back reticent about anything but the divine nature on the go that nature has been given unto you and you will possess the land in jesus name it says it's by that by the precious promises will be partakers of the divine nature then it says having escaped the corruption that is in the world through laws i told you that anything that comes into the hands of the people of the world that thing is corrupted that thing is corrupted and it says because of that divine nature he has given to you that you will escape 
the corruption that's in the world. Uh, have you noticed, um, you know, any good thing that came with all this civilization? Have you noticed that when it gets in the hands of some people, it's corrupted? Think about that. Think about that. Anything that gets into the hands of people who are not born again, that thing becomes corrupted. And when you think about that, you see all throughout society. That's what you're going to find. That's what you're going to find. And there's a good thing there, and then it gets into their hand, it's corrupted. I don't want to, you know, mention this or that, but you know, in the land, you know, some good, good things, good, good things that we have in this nation, good, good things that came from civilization. It gets into our hand, the thing is corrupted. But he's saying that we escape that corruption. You're going to escape that in Jesus' name. Look at Jeremiah chapter 32, precious promises, understanding, understanding the fullness of the precious promises. We're looking at Jeremiah chapter 32. Jeremiah chapter 32 I'm reading from verse 38 And they shall be my people And I will be their God And I will give them One heart and one way That they may fear me Forever for the good Of them and of their children After them It's telling us it's going to give us one heart The same heart that is You know although you might be a man You might be a woman He gives, he gives both of you one heart, the same kind of heart. You might be a pastor, you might be a member. He gives both of you one heart. Or you might be from the west, he might be from the north, north, he gives you one heart. You might be from the south, south, you might be from the southeast, he gives you one heart. You might be from Nigeria, you might be from Ghana, he gives you one heart. You might be from the southern part of Africa or from the eastern part of Africa, he gives one heart precious promise uh, you know what some people think they think that you know we are from this area in our area of africa this is the way they practice christianity and then in this other area the headquarters is coming from west africa it's coming from nigeria well that's their own kind of commitment and that's their own kind of lifestyle but you know uh, give us give us uh, what you have brought and then we'll sift it and we'll see the kind of thing we can practice and the one we cannot practice no sir because he gives all of us the same words he manifests the same power he grants us the same divine nature and then he gives us the same heart one heart one way one life and anywhere we are when we come together you will not even know you will not even know that he is from east africa he is from west africa he is from northern part of africa he is from southern africa he is from here he is from there because the lord has given us one life one heart and the same resources for godliness i pray that it will be real in our midst in jesus name and you know the same heart you have is what you're carrying about you know whether you are here in the camp at the at the headquarters church or you go to your locality in your local government and your heart doesn't change just because you are from here and then you're over there now the same obedience and the same quietness and the same submission and the same consecration and the same devotion to the word of god is from the heart is after all it's not on the ground it's not the ibtc ground that makes you behave somehow it's the heart whatever behavior whatever attitude and whatever life and whatever action and whatever decision whatever motivation is because of the heart is the heart is out of the heart proceeds forth, goes forth all the issues of life whether you are here or you are at home or anywhere you are it's the heart that generates that conviction it's the heart that generates that conduct and that lifestyle and therefore when he gives us one heart those of us here at their quarters and those of you over there in your location we're going to behave the same we're going to act the same because we have one heart not adamic heart not adamic nature but it says i will give them one heart and one way that they may fear me forever for the good of them and of their children after the verse 40 i will make them an everlasting covenant give me a good amen he says he'll make with us an everlasting covenant that I will not turn away from them. Give me a good another amen. 
uh, you, you know there are people that only when we're in the meeting like this they feel the power and they feel the surging of uh, you know the fervency of prayer and then uh, and they feel the nearness of god as i praise the lord god was there and when those much so when they prayed i was inspired i was energized motivated to pray i prayed like never before and now you get back home and you say what am i going to do now i don't feel the presence of god god is still there as much as he was here i said god is still here and god is there too because he says i will never i will not turn away from them so as you are here you have the presence of god as you are there too you have the presence of god and says i will put my fear in their hearts i will put my fear in their hearts. i will put my fear in their hearts. what precious promise the lord has given us that you know that that's why we do what we do that's why we don't do what we don't do the other people that do whatever they want to do anytime anywhere there's no fear of god there and can we blame them the lord has not put the fear of, of his name of his glory in their heart and in those of us the lord has put his fear in our heart we just you know we live according to our nature you know the fish is not uh, you know asking the bird why are you not swimming fish you cannot ask the, the bird why are you not swim because it is impossible for that bird to swim that's the nature when he gives us the divine nature we live according to our nature and you know sometimes we there are people that send uh, uh, people for training they go for all the seminary thing and all that and then when they come out they're still the same and then people are like, but why but why let me ask you a question you send doc you know doc d u c h you know uh, c k you know doc uh -huh. you send doc to eagles school and then the dog is there is coming out and going in one year two years and three years and the dog is in eagle school and he comes and he says i am in the eagle school i'm in the eagle school and then he comes out of school after three years and tell now dog fly tell me no way go to school but the heart is not changed Go to school but the nature is not changed go to seminary and when and if what if you send eagle to dogs school and now the eagle is there it's in the school of the dogs and then he comes out after coming out to you know coming out of the school three years he sees a rabbit immediately he has an urge to get after that rabbit and kill that rabbit and he said why do i have this urge to kill rabbits well the school i went the dogs don't kill rabbits it's the nature and when god puts his nature in you things will be different and that nature is coming in your heart today in jesus name i will put my fear in them that they shall not depart from me we're looking at jeremiah chapter one understanding the fullness of his precious promises jeremiah chapter one i'm reading there from verse seven but the lord said unto me say not i am a child for thou shalt go to all that i shall send thee and whatsoever i command thee thou shalt speak he said you will go you will go i said you will go he says you will go to all the people i will send you it's a promise it's a special promise a precious promise you know sometimes uh, you know it happens that god is sent to a place you have never been and to go say what you have never said and to interact with people you have never interacted with and you're wondering how can this happen i'm not trained for this i'm not prepared for this i wasn't kind of uh, drilled on this and yet the lord is saying don't say that you're incapable incompetent don't say that you're just a child and that you cannot do it because you will go to all the people i will send you and whatsoever i command you thou shalt speak be not afraid of their faces you will not be afraid for i am with thee to deliver thee says the lord then the lord put forth his hand and he touched my mouth and the lord said unto me behold i have put my words in thy mouth see i have this day set thee over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out and to pull down and to destroy 
and to throw down and to build and to plant it will happen i said it will happen psalm 2 i'm reading from verse 8 precious promises precious promises understanding those promises and walking in expectation to receive and to have and to possess those precious promises psalm 2 we're looking at verse 8 ask of me and i shall give thee the heathen for thine inheritance what a promise i shall give thee if you ask if you demand i shall give thee the heathen for your inheritance then he says and the uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession give me a good amen there amen. the lord will do that you know he's telling us to ask the gentiles the heathen the unbelievers in the different parts of the world and he'll give us that as an inheritance and we're asking for toys we're asking for something that will not last one day that will not last one week and he's telling us to ask for souls of men that will live for all eternity and we're asking for this little sin there concerned about that little sin there and yet he's giving us a precious promise and he says if you ask me i'm going to give you the heathen for your inheritance i'm going to give you the uttermost parts of the earth and you're going to possess that deeper life is going to claim this Amen. and we are going to have this and we're going to see the church in different parts of the world beyond africa in jesus name we're looking at uh, acts of the apostles chapter 18 acts of the apostles chapter 18 i'm reading from verse 9 acts of the apostles chapter 18 verse 9 is saying then speak the lord to paul in a vision in the in the night by a vision be not afraid but speak and hold not thy peace for i am with thee is the lord with you i said is the lord with you uh-huh why are you running away from troublesome spots then if the lord is with you or you're running away from the village then if the lord is with you or you're running away from your post of duty if the lord is with you why are you not facing the challenge that the lord himself is calling you to if you know that the lord is with you and if you know that the lord is there he will not allow anything to happen to you until you finish your assignment until you finish your work and you know that he's going to send his angels to be your bodyguard and he's going to protect you why then will you be afraid that you are running helter skelter the lord is with you i said the lord is with you when you get to the village you realize that precious promise when you get to all the people that you know they do not want the gospel and they do not want to have they want to live according to the world in the midst of those enemies of those giants of those goliaths you'll find that the promise of the lord will not fail and you will not fail in jesus name because he said for i am with thee and no man no man shall set on thee to hurt thee for i have much people in this city he has much people he has many people and because of the many people many people that need to be saved many people that need to be born again many people that need to give their lives to the lord many people that are waiting come over to macedonia and help us and because of those many people that are waiting that's why the lord is saying why are you afraid i will be with you everywhere i send you you will go and you're going to find there are people who such are prepared already and they are been waiting and when you get there you begin to speak the word the word will touch their hearts the words will turn them around and they're going to receive the word of god in jesus name this is the precious promise the lord is giving us the lord is telling us that because he'll be with us and his power will be with us and his authority the authority of the name of jesus will be with us it says because of that you will go to all the places i will send you and then when he says this is the place to go you'll not be conferring and discussing with flesh and blood as to how can that be how can i do that how can i do that? you are going to do it in jesus name and it says over here let me read that verse verse 10 again for i am with thee and no man shall set on thee to all thee for i have much people in the city and he continued there tell me tell me again tell me again 
uh, you know uh, sometimes i told you the lord does not speak to our tradition the lord does not speak to our background the lord does not speak to you know whatever it is we have had in the past that you know the lord is saying this is what you do and he said he continued there he continued there he continued there and the lord does not speak to us as part of the community as part of society you know if paul the apostle were to go and ask other people he's been to test micah and the people that were expecting him and the lord is saying i have much people in this place stay there and get the work done if he asked the thessalonians what do you think i want to stay here for one half years they say how oh, can you do that paul we have been waiting here and then don't you love us don't you want to be with us again the lord speaks to our faith and the lord will be speaking into your faith at this time in jesus name and you know we have a state of us here and it's there and you know his people love him and he loves his people and then he there's an adopted adopted country and that adopted country he needs to go there and then he gets there and the lord is saying spend more than two weeks and must spend more than four weeks and spend more than four five weeks here and then he stays there and then people are writing our state of us here what's happening where are you are you relocating and then he says there's much people here and people are getting converted and you a group of pastors and you district pastors continue get the work done and those three overseers get the work done just send this to me and just send this to me it's there for another three months it's there for another four months they said then they are already saying well we don't know what's happening over here now maybe they have taken this uh, person away from us and it's never coming back the lord is speaking to our faith and he's saying what we have never done we are going to do them in jesus name and it's not about you know uh, you know this is the way we did it before the lord will never speak to your past he speaks to your future you know the things we've done in the past and the places we've been in the past and the attitude of the past and the commitment of the past and this is the way we've always done it and we're expecting that God will speak to us according to our past according to the experiences of the past if you are tied down to the experiences of the past you'll miss the appointment of the future and i pray you'll not miss the appointment of the future in jesus name that's why it says here and he continued there a year and six months teaching the word of god god among them i pray that the lord will help you to do that in jesus name the precious promises he has given unto us we're going to go through all those precious promises and the lord is going to fulfill them in our lives in jesus name revelation chapter 3 and we're looking at verse 8 here revelation chapter 3 we're reading it from verse 8 all through to verse 10 revelation chapter 3 verse 8 i know thy works behold i have set before thee an open door are you there yeah. i have set before thee an open door yeah. and no man can shut it yeah. and no man can shut it yeah. and no devil can shut it and no spirit can shut it and no family can shut it hey, you know sometimes when god opens a door before you i mean before you i mean before you what am i talking about i said what am i talking about he opens a door before you and then you know there are people as it was so it is and so it will ever be you know they just feel that we must not change the momentum we must not change you know the direction in which the the ball is rolling and then the lord is saying you know we need to roll the ball this way and roll the ball that way and then you know the people that uh, their own concept their understanding they are they're living in the past and the future is leaving them behind and then you know it's like when god opens that door before you then there's they, they, they're kind of they're talking they're acting they're doing this and that and they, you are thinking that they can block that door they will not block your door yeah. now close your door in jesus name yeah. when god opens a door you know god has a master key that only he has that key and when he opens the door with that key that only he holds there's no duplicate to that key in the hand of your enemy that they cannot they cannot close they cannot lock the door that the almighty god has opened and when god shuts the door against infirmity 
against sickness, against evil. He shuts the door. He has a key that only he can operate. Only he can use. There's no other key. There's no duplicate in the hand of anybody to be able to open the door that you are shut i thank god because the precious promises of the lord they're coming to you today and you're going to have the benefits of them in jesus name verse 8 i know thy works behold i have said before thee an open door and no man can shut it for thou hast a little strength and hast kept my word and hast not denied my name behold I will make them who are of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship and bow before thy feet, and to know that I have loved thee, and because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation and trial which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth it says don't look around again and say that's happening here that's happening that's hap that's happening everywhere it says anything happening all over the world will not touch you will not come to your doorstep the precious promises of the lord understanding them now point number two uprooting fortresses against his precious promise approaching approaching fortresses against his precious promises we're looking at jeremiah once again i'm looking at verse 10 jeremiah chapter 1 verse 10 you are going to uproot all the fortresses Militating against the precious promises of the Lord in your life. We're looking at uh, Jeremiah chapter 1. Jeremiah chapter 1. We're reading from verse 10. Jeremiah 1 verse 10. See, I have this day when? I said when? This day. See, I have this day said thee over the nations and over the kingdom to do what? Number one, to root out. Number two, tell me. To pull down. Number three, tell me. To destroy. Number four, tell me. To throw down. First of all, it says, all the, before you can build and plant, before you can still succeed and move forward, it says there is something to approach. You know, there are people, and they just keep on planting and keep on building and keep on planting and keep on building. And then, as they are building, the things that are going to destroy, they're just following. They're walking. You know, you walk on Monday and on Tuesday. The thing that is going to approach everything you planted will come, approach everything. Then you walk on Tuesday. And then on Wednesday, the thing that is going to destroy what you're building it will demolish everything, will come. Then you walk on wednesday and the thing that will demolish everything is coming on thursday a day after a day after a week after a month after a year after and they never stop to think that all this destruction they never stop to think that all these things that are demolishing destroying uprooting everything and building how why don't i deal with them the lord is saying that he sets you up and there are fortresses and there are things militating against what the lord wants you to do and what you're doing and you're not seeing the fruit of your labor and it says first of all all those fortresses against the precious promises of god in your life that you are to root out and that you are throw down you are to pull down and you are to destroy only after that you will build and you will plant you know the many people who are you know they're working hard they're working hard they have a good certificate they have a good brain they have a good place of what they're working in and they have everything around them good and they're doing their very best but there is you know one maid over there in the house that has this contrary spirit and is working against everything they're doing in that family and they walk and walk and walk and they know that they can succeed and the people that are not working as much as them as that family the husband and wife they're succeeding they're building 
They're progressing. They're getting this and they're getting that done. But this maid is there. But the maid is, you know, so serviceable, so useful. The maid, you know, she will do all the cooking and all the ironing and all the this and all the that. And everything is so wonderful and so great. And eventually, the Lord wanted to help that family. And then he showed a dream to the wife. And the wife saw that as they were, they were trying to build something in that dream, and as they were gathering all the sand and everything, then this they, they, what just saw the maid she go using shovel and throwing everything away. The more they were putting, the more the maid was throwing away, and then they couldn't gather anything together. And then she woke up in the middle of the night and then began to think she couldn't sleep. What kind of thing is this? All that we are gathering. This uh, girl is taking shovel and throwing everything away. And the Lord revealed to her that that is the root cause of their poverty and failure. And then they woke up in the morning and you know, the wife said, my husband, after their devotion, I, I had a dream today, a weird dream. How can this be? I see what I saw and then told the husband. And the husband said, well, I didn't have any dream, but actually I've been feeling that way. I've been feeling that this uh, girl, this lady, her hands are not clean that she knows something about what we're experiencing here but what are we going to do when you go to work and i go to work this is the lady that will take care of the home and gets everything clean and said this and said that if we drive this one away can we get another person that will be able to keep the whole neat and keep the whole everything is all right well what are we going we're, we're stuck we don't know what to do i know i can tell you what to do i said i can tell you what to do in fact my brother here can tell you what to do that sister can tell you what to do if i call any of you do you know what they should do yes. what should they do yes. uproot everybody say uproot yes. tell that girl your time is over i said what yes. your time is over and let her go you might need to readjust your family you might need to adjust what you are doing and give some time cleaning your house yourself you might need to adjust and doing this yourself and doing that yourself but your time is over and then when she goes now your house is a private thing but your work is a public thing the food you eat that's a that's a private thing but the success of your ministry that's a public thing that you have this have that that's private but your ministry the project he has given in your hand that's public and if the private convenience will destroy the very source of living and the very reason for living your project your life you uproot that internal scene so that externally what you'll be rewarded for in eternity the lord is not going to reward you for all the food you eat on earth or the clothes you wear on earth all the conveniences and comforts you add on earth is going to reward you for the public ministry what you do in the lives of people and if the sin the lord is not going to reward you for is destroying what the lord is going to reward you for in eternity you uproot all those fortresses against the precious promises of the lord you are going to do it you know you need to check up the ministry you need to check up the church where you are and if you are walking and laboring you fast eh, some of you you fast and you pray we want revival in this church we want days in this church and the lord is going to do it and while the lord is getting ready to do it there's an acorn there that you are afraid to approach what the lord is wanting to do there's a demons there that you are not willing to approach once the, the lord is willing to do the thing there is a jezebel there and you are not willing to approach this this year is a year for uprooting all the fortresses against the promises of the lord in jesus name and now i'm going to show you something sometimes when you do the approaching there's going to be a kind of negative reaction and uh, let me say this way you take one step backward that you may take eight steps forward think about that you have to take sometimes one step backward minus one so that you can take how many steps forward eight steps forward eventually how many steps do you have forward seven steps forward 
But if you are afraid to take one step backward, you will remain at that spot the rest of your life. But if you're willing and you say, I'm going to take one step backward so that I can take eight steps forward. In Second Chronicles chapter 25, I'm reading to you there, 2 Chronicles chapter 25. Once again, everybody say, approach. Amen. You'll approach in Jesus' name. You don't be so sympathetic with the termites in your ministry. You don't be so sympathetic to the detractors and destroyers in your ministry that you just do approach the fortresses against the precious promise. Second Chronicles, are you there? I said, are you there? I'm reading from verse 5. Moreover, Amaziah gathered Judah together and made them captains over thousands according to the houses of their fathers throughout all Judah and Benjamin. And he numbered them from 20 years old and above and found them 300,000 choice men able to go forth to war that could handle spear and shield. Verse 6, he hired also. He had his own men that could fight. He had so many of them that he could mobilize and make them to do what they were called to do. But then he felt, I need more hands. Look at the more hands now. Verse 6, he hired also and hundred thousand mighty men of valor out of israel for an hundred talents of silver he paid for that one his own people of course that's voluntary his own people that's their work his own people they rallied around him but these other people he just hired them and he paid a hundred talents of silver but there came a man of god to him saying O king let not the army of israel go with thee for the lord is not not with Israel to wit with all the children of Ephraim. But if thou wilt go, do it. Be strong for the battle. God shall make thee, tell me, fall before the enemy. For God has, God has power to help and to cast down. And Amaziah said to the man of God, But what shall we do for the hundred talents which I have given to the army of Israel. And the man of God answered, The Lord is able to give thee much more than this. You have lost that one because you didn't pray before you employ them, before you hired them. Now the money is in their hand. And the Lord is saying, They cannot go with you to the battle. If you still want to, because you gave them money and you want to keep your money and their services, go and do it. But you are going to fall before the enemy if you do that. Look at verse 10. Then Amaziah separated them to which the army that was come to him out of Ephraim to go home again. Wherefore their anger was greatly kindled against Judah. And they returned home, tell me, in great anger. That's taking one step backwards. He lost something. Number one, he lost his money because of that. But see what happened. And then Amaziah strengthened himself and led forth his people and went to the valley of salt and smote the children of Seir. How many? He overcame. You will overcome. I said you will overcome. What if he had said, I've committed myself already. I've made a commitment, I've made a promise. And you know what they tell us, uh, you know, those people that teach us about leadership? They say that integrity is keeping your word. They say, be a man of your word. That if you say, I'm hiring you, you are here. Even if you discover after that time, you made a mistake, integrity means keep your word. Look at Amaziah. Amaziah gave his word already. Amaziah already paid them, hired them. And the man of God said, The Lord is not with these people you have hired. They're going to work against you. You're not going to succeed in life. You will be a defeated king. You'll be a slave for the rest of your life. And he said, What am I going to do? I've given my word. I paid them the price they named. And the man of God said, This one, integrity in the world is that even if you see that the fire is going to burn your house and burn your house down, they say integrity means keep your word and die. Keep your word and lose your success. 
keep your word and lose everything you're living for but the word of god is saying that promise you made was a sinful promise because you didn't check up and you repent of everything sinful if you make a sinful promise you repent of the sinful promise you say i promised you that i will marry you but i discover that you have been married before i'm sorry the promise i gave i cannot fulfill that again that's integrity in the word of god i said that's integrity in the word of god but well i promised her already and then i now discover another story so i can i cannot uh, i cannot change my word i'm still going to do it do it and go to hell is that all right be have integrity and go to hell is that all right no change that and approach you'll approach in jesus name you know the people that have all these workers and all these workers and the prayer warriors are praying and see that worker there and the worker there as you know they are praying the worker falls now then they carry her out and they say what do you do he said i am i don't want to mention <laughs> you know they they have this work and this work and then they they begin to probe and he said actually uh, they sent us here to do this and to do that ah then they went to our pastor and they, not me oh, don't don't look at me i mean they went to your pastor <laughs> And they told the pastor and they said this woman this is what we discovered i said shut up don't destroy the church if anybody hears that that somebody is in the workforce and he has this kind of spirit it will discourage people and woman high about it eh, they sent me here okay and eh, they sent you here but what are you going to do now i have repented i'm now with the church whatever you tell me you are my pastor forever forever i am not your pastor forever forever i will never have them in my church in jesus name what do you do approach the fortresses against the precious promises of the lord we don't have enough workers we don't have enough people and these people they know too much of the secret of the church what secret do they know if they go out they will go and tell the secret of the church the secret of the church is in their hand i don't have any secrets in anybody's hand do you and this church doesn't have any secret in anybody's hand what i tell you in darkness go and reveal on the house top what is the secret send her away i said send her away and take one step backward that you may take eight steps forward that's what you do approaching fortresses against the precious promise second corinthians chapter 10 what it is from verse 4 and verse 5 for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but mighty through god to the pulling down of what strongholds casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of god and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of christ we're going to do that and when you do that this church and your church your local church in particular you're going to move forward in jesus name after approaching number three now upholding faith for the precious promises upholding upholding faith in the precious promises that's what to uphold that's what will see us through and this year as individuals as families as ministers we're going to have and we're going to possess all the precious promises in jesus name we're looking at him um, at hebrews chapter 6 hebrews chapter 6 we're reading from verse 12 hebrews chapter 6 we're reading there from verse 12 here he tells us in the word of god it says that ye be not slothful but followers of them who through faith and patience what will we do inherit the promises it will happen matthew 17 we're looking at verse 20 it says and jesus said unto them because of your unbelief for verily i say unto you that if ye have faith as a grain of mustard seed ye shall say to this mountain remove hence to yonder place and it shall remove and it shall remove and it shall remove and nothing shall be impossible 
unto you. Give me a good amen. amen. Uh -huh. Now, verse 21. How be it this kind? Tell me. I said you read verse 21. Won't you go? Again. We're talking about approaching there are some things we only approach by prayer and fasting something can overcome only by prayer and fasting look up here brothers and sisters here we are leaders of this church from the whole of the continent of africa and if the message gets a little bit late beyond the time on paper I were likely to delay the breakfast a little. Break fast. Break fast. You understand? Fast. Then you break it. If we delay the break fast a little, people are grumbling already. They're unhappy already. We lose the congregation already. And they're saying, what are we doing? We're delaying, break, breaking the fast. That's what we're doing. And many people, if you look at the whole of last year that is gone, want to see miracle, demonstration of power, no fasting. We can't do without food. And we, who are leaders and ministers, we eat so heavy, even at night, we cannot sleep. And when we're not sleeping, we cannot pray. There's too much food. There's too much eating. We're adding weight. We're not slimming down. And obesity has its own problem. That's another problem. That's another story. Another message. No fasting. No dealing with our food. And if in any of our congresses, we say that the congress at this time, we're going to give two three days to fasting and praying we'll preach a little and pray much and then from morning till night we only break that fast in the night and because we see that the precious promises the lord has given us that nothing will be impossible and we cannot get this done except by prayer and fasting the people that are going to be going and saying what new changes are they bringing what new things are they doing? See all the good things they have done for us. See all this, uh, you know, our IBTC here. How large it is. Is it by fasting that this one took place? Is this not enough? What else are we looking for? That we, now they say that in our Congress, they said nobody should go and buy food over there. Stay inside here. We're going to pray and we're going to fast. <laughs> what new thing is this? The challenges we face today and the problems that we face today that the lord is telling us if you still continue to do this work as you did it in the past years we're going to go back it will be difficult to go forward that's why the lord is telling us i'm giving you a precious promise and this precious promise nothing will be impossible for you on one condition this kind goes not out but by prayer and fasting no, we're not, you know, we're not imposing anything on anybody. We're not saying this is compulsory. But if you're looking for something higher, you're looking for something greater. And, and, and you know, sometimes there are some people, uh, you know, some of our, you know, pastors, they might have faced that challenge that you want to wait upon the lord and then you're maybe you during your retreat it may be in your retreat or whatever and you just feel that i want to change in this retreat not a change of accommodation change of attendance change of you just want a breakthrough and then you're waiting upon the lord and the ushers you know maybe the the ushers normally bring food to you and the people workers they normally serve you and you see that you know you didn't uh, you know eat in the morning you didn't eat at all time and instead of you know coming to you and in respecting you understanding your self-denial and wanting to do the will of god so that this church your church in the region in the state can move forward 
No. Or they'll begin to demonstrate some things to you and they'll begin to show you this and this to, to say, we know what you are trying to do. Don't you do that. We don't want you to die of hunger. Hey, there are people in Niger Republic who are, who are not able, they are not fasting, but they don't have any food to eat. And they are not dying. They are surviving. The people in Sudan who are not able to get anything to eat, they are not dying. They are still surviving. And there are people in Somalia. And there are people in many places that are not able to eat. There are many people that are not able to get three meals a day. If they are able to get only one one meal they are not fasting is a circumstance that forces them into that they are surviving there are even people i will tell you in the west that are not able to get three square meals every day and they're surviving but leaders in our church and the lord is saying this kind goeth not out but by prayer and fasting i want to tell you that you know in this church we didn't have all these, you know, prayer warriors, prayer warriors, prayer warriors. We didn't have them. All we had were the presence of God with us. And where we went, anywhere we went, miracles happened. I said miracles happened. And I don't want to tell you too much about myself, but I will tell you, those who have been very long in Ivory Coast, they will remember this. We had, uh, you know, this, uh, I, I just went into the meeting. I came from Nigeria and I got to him and I sat down and our pastor he is uh, now in Ghana he was uh, preaching I think that day and I just sat down there and I just looked around the congregation and then when I, I got to a particular lady on the fourth row of uh, the hall in front of me and I just I, normally I don't uh, you know I don't center my attention particularly on ladies but I just kept on looking at her I kept on looking at her without even saying a word preaching was going on then immediately when she, i just i couldn't look in any other direction then she sh started shaking as she kept on looking then she started crying as kept on looking and then she started manifesting i was just looking at her and then they carried her out and then she confessed that you know this is who she was and she was delivered and then another it was in that uh, kind of a few days there that i think the following day somebody it was passing by the road a yopogon church is by the side of the road and as the church was by side of, while you were clapping and singing and this fellow that had tiger spirit that anywhere he goes he'll send the tiger in there and scatter everybody and so he said okay what are they doing there they said they're having church he said let me go and scatter them and then he, get, he got in there and that night i was preaching and then as i was preaching uh pray is the lord his tiger spirit could not operate i said his tiger spirit could not operate and then when i finished i gave the altar call and then i said if you are there you need to give your life to the lord raise up your hand he raised up i said come out here he came out i said close your eyes he closed his eyes i said bound down. he bound down he said and we prayed and then i didn't even pray for tiger or whatever and i said you are forgiven and all that he opened his eyes he began to cry shout where's my tiger where's my tiger tiger was gone and then he still told us later, I said, he never closed his eyes for anybody in his life. And he never bowed his head for anybody in his life. I'm telling you, this kind goes not out, but by prayer and fasting. I don't publicize you my lifestyle. I don't publicize my fasting or whatever. Only that, you know, people who are around me who normally serve, they just see that, you know, pastor did not eat today, what's happening? And they don't ask me any question. They just leave me alone. But, you know, maybe some of you are not free like that to decide side in your life that this is what you do at this time and when you are doing that there are people that will you know show this at you and show this sign and they're trying to they're, they're pitying you they say pastor will die too early if he's fasting at this age fasting doesn't kill it's a feasting that kills in a good amen <laughs> my daddy used to tell me when i was very young, i said come on stand up and walk walk doesn't kill it's laziness that kills did you hear that before and i'm saying fasting doesn't kill of course you are not going to fast for three months in a row you're going to fast you know moderately and you're going to fast at the appropriate time and the power of god will come upon your life in jesus name and the precious promises the lord is giving unto us we're going to possess them whether the devil likes it or not this church is going to march forward and going to rise up in the might in the strength of the lord in jesus name 
this kind of faith mountain moving faith dynamic faith a faith that you will find nothing impossible is coming to you today is entering your heart right now and even if you have to fast even if you have to do without this and without that i'm telling you now fasting is not only doing without food fasting is doing without some things that have pleasure fasting is doing without something there's some things personal choice personal choice that this will give me many friends this will give me pleasure this will give me joy this will give me you know but all those things those friends and those pleasures not sinful not sinful food is not sinful there's some normal things that we just say this will not hurt me or harm me but it will take my time they waste my life they will waste my resources. They will lessen my power. They will weaken me. And because of that, I permanently do without them. That's a form of fasting. And when you do that in your life, the Lord will speak to you. The Lord will let you know that these precious promises you ought to have, you are going to have them. And then you are upholding that faith. You are renewing that faith every day. And you are saying, oh Lord, I am moving forward. You are going to move forward. Are you ready? Where are you? Ah, you are ready? Instead of standing on the promises, you are sitting in the premises. Come on now, get up and say today, today. Today, today. You are going to have the promises in Jesus' name. Why don't you open your mouth and talk to the Lord and say, Lord, here am I today upholding the face for the precious promises. Upholding the faith for the precious promises understand the precious promises the fullness of each the glory of each the height of each the depth of each and approach all the fortresses against the precious promises of the lord and all the faith the faith the mountain moving faith and all those personalities that will hinder the fulfillment of the promises of God in your life. You are getting rid of them. And any friendship that saps your energy. Any fellowship that destroys your effectiveness. Not able to walk. Like the faith of the apostles. Precious faith. Develop. Manifest. Precious faith. And the precious promises.